before I start, I want to say something that had I been invited, I remember my first time. I will address it later on. My first time in Seoul Conference. I knew only three people. Like, and I asked myself, what do you do in a conference when you don't know the people that are there? A lot of thinking, and then I came with the formula. I'll sit where, whenever I sit, I'll turn to the person on my right, and then to the person on my left, and I will say, my name is Yoram, and I'm from Israel. The other person will probably introduce himself, herself, and then we'll continue. It worked. But what happened is that when I said that to the first person, he said, oh, yes, I saw you on the list. OK. When the second person said, oh, yes, I know, I saw you on the list. And I was wondering, where did they put a list with all the participants that they know that I'm there? It took me time to realize that they spoke about the group list, you know, in the internet, meaning they saw what I wrote at that time. And then they connected. But the idea, I saw you on the list. Wow, there's a list somewhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> My first <coughs> acquaintance with the uh, Seoul Conference. Uh, and I'll get to it uh, later on. Uh, so I always ask myself, like, what do I answer? And the, the answer keeps changing. You know, like I'm not the same person I was a minute ago. You know, solution focus, it always changes. So uh, the idea is that I'll start by speaking about myself. Maybe in a way that I'm not used to it. Normally I'm listening to the participants, to the clients. Man. But I already, I'm already saying, stating that it is connected to the theme of the workshop. Uh, is the, is the first time you hear about the concept of genius zone? You heard about it, so? OK. So let's start. <coughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the figure. Oh. Hi. Uh, it's a no problem. A, a true story that I usually open with is that um, once I went to a coffee shop and asked for coffee, and the waitress brought it. And then I asked, may I have uh, something to sweeten? She said, no problem. And she was about to go and bring it. And then I stopped her and said, please wait a second. You know, I'm a part of a community of solution focus. We don't use the word problem. <laughs> There's no need to say no problem, because I didn't st say that, the, you know, and uh, all conversation. So my request to you is, please, when I ask for something, say, OK, fine, <laughs> anything but no problem. <laughs> She said, fine. I said, thank you. She said, no problem, and went away. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So 20 years, this is me 20 years ago. Lovely. Yes, getting young every time. <laughs> uh, this is my presentation. It is important to connect the dots. And this is uh, Mark McEgo uh, interviewing me before the workshop. Um, and the, <coughs> well, the story behind, today I will connect it to the genius zone, but it was that um, a few months earlier, I was asked by Mark, will you attend the conference? And I said yes, and after thinking, I said, and I will present something. And then I asked myself, what do I have to present to people that are already more familiar with the uh, concept of solution focus? And that was uh, an insight for me, changing a panic question. What do I have to contribute to a working question? It's a good question. What do I have to contribute? Now answer it. And then there was uh, <coughs> a few months, uh, lots of books about solution focus, most of them about solution, fo solution focused therapy. And I said, I'm an expert in teams, really expert, anything. So. Um, I'll do something about solution focus and teams. I went back to Israel, I did a solution focus uh, team development to a management of uh, um, electronic um, plant, and just documented it. And that was my presentation. For me, it was 
uh, also interesting professionally because it, it meant how do you work the solution focus with a team? Not with one person, not with a group, but with a team. I'm sensitive to words. I'll get to it later on. And I remember that <coughs> when Daniel Mayer, for example, um, wrote a book about solution focus coaching teams, very carefully, now I feel more comfortable, but very carefully, I read the book and, and, and told him, you know, that if I take the book and wherever the word team is, and I take it out of the book and place it with the word group, I don't have to change anything in the book. He thought, 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 and said, you're right. I was right because I was right. But then, for me, being minded to words, team and group is different. Okay? In what matter? Different story. So <laughs> I am attentive, and that led to me later on to do my PhD, that the thesis was the usefulness of solution focused in team development. A qualitative research, and my PhD is in solution focus. So is it solution focus, themes, or anything else? Now, there's a lot of speaking about SF work. What is it? Is it is it changing and everything? I'm cutting the story short and I <coughs> used the acronym SFMW, Solution Focus My Way. And the idea is that each and every one of us do solution focus work as practitioner. Yet, everyone gives its flavor, okay? So the basic might be the same. So it's not that I work exactly like someone else. I work the solution focus way. I remember a conversation with Insu Kimberg that I had <coughs> in Interlaken, and I, I said to her, I, I saw a few uh, videos of you. You often use the affirmation of wow. And yet, it's not the same wow. So every time the wow are the same three letters, W-O-W, -W, but the meaning is different. Here I admire, here I'm impressed, here, etc. So, <coughs> uh, by calling, really took me time to formulate. I am a connector. I connect words, I connect people in teams. I connect ideas and how it works. I go and hear something here and then connect it to, and that way I develop, okay, and create new concepts. Another story, <coughs> no, but, but okay, let's uh, put it here because it, Touches. For example, um, for the last uh, 13 years, I went back to the army. I served my service until the age of 50, and then I was invited, and my role uh, was to be a psychologist for casualty notification teams. Those who go to the family say, I'm sorry to let you know that your son was killed. So the team came to me to work. Uh, <coughs> and I found myself saying that the debriefing after should be different from what it used to be. For example, uh, the idea was that if someone is hurt, meaning traumatized, the family is tra traumatized, the team might be second traumatized. And this is why they need a psychologist to speak with. Th that was the idea, to minimize the damage. And then I said, <coughs> why minimize the damage? Damage as a problem, so why not something to grow with? Now today we know that, that there is a term post-traumatic growth, okay? So it is as if it's good to have, to notice the family because one grows from that. But in the IDF, it's the only place in the world <coughs> that a notification is given by a team. Again, me being attentive to teams. And then there's another article about what's in CTA, CNT, casual notification teams, how it works. The debriefing, I presented it in Seoul, in uh, Liverpool, 
okay? One can see that the debriefing is the solution focus way. Okay? Someone who is not familiar with solution focus would say, okay, it's a good debriefing. But those who are familiar with solution focus can, un un can identify the stages. By that, I sort of um, share with you that it's not just working as a solution focus therapist, consultant, coach, but it's different kind of work with solution focus. So my invitation for each and every one of you to, to get the idea and to work with what can everyone do with solution focus outside what you already do, consulting, coaching, training, therapist, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> so I am expert in team, and I find myself working in dif with different kind of teams. And every time I tell myself, this is not the same team. Every team is different. Not only because of the members, but also because of the, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, the purpose, the goal. So, and I know what to say about that. I said already that I love words. I'm playing with them, sometimes in uh, jokes and sometimes in actually getting what the other side wants to say. And I find myself saying it in a way better than what he does, he or she does. So if someone wants to be afraid for me, is to take into account that I really listen. I really listen. <coughs> I didn't plan to do so, Simon, sorry. Um, but since you're here, okay, it's not a... For example, when I wrote uh, in Facebook that I received my PhD, and what was the title? Many congratulated me, and it's okay. Simon said it's a small note. For him, just sharing. But I remember until today. Okay, you know, it's the first time that there is such a research that combine the solution focus with. So now I can say proudly, I'm the first person who did a research, not who said, not who did a workshop, did a research about the connection between solution focus and teamwork. Okay, thank you, Simon. <coughs> two more uh, examples. Um, in 2005, Someone was there? Okay. I played the, the saxophone on stage. A year earlier, I said that um, uh, it was in Stockholm. I listened to the cabaret, and uh, uh, Jenny was sitting beside me. And I said to her, how about Mark and I play together next time in, um, in Interlaken? And she said, uh, what will you play? I don't know, a saxophone. Do you know how to play a saxophone? I said, no. I, I don't even know. Do you hold it like that or like that? So she said, how, how will you do? I don't know. I have one ear from now. Let's see. I probably ate, uh, drank too much wine. But two weeks later, I get an, an email from Klaus from Germany. How are your saxophone lessons going on? And then I found a teacher, I started to play saxophone, and we played summertime. So actually I can say that I was, that I gave my first public performance in an international setting. <laughs> you know, playing with them. But the, I'm saying it because when I was about, she's not here, I will not say her name, when I was invited to the stage, and um, she asked me, are you nervous? And I said to myself, that's a question just before I go. <laughs> <laughs> but I found myself, and this is my genius zone, immediately answering, no, I'm excited. And I went and all the rest is history. My first creation of playing with words, I do it a lot in Hebrew now also in English, was in Seoul, another Seoul conference, where Kirsten was on stage, 
and she shared about um, a project that she and her colleagues worked. But they didn't, uh, they couldn't finish the, they couldn't finish the, the project. So they asked Ben Foreman from Finland to help them, and with his help, they managed to finish the work. And then I said, of course, <laughs> you managed to finish with Ben Foreman. You got the Finnish guy. <laughs> you know, uh, that was the first time that just, you know, like, it automatically. Yeah. So for me, it comes easily, okay? I don't have to work on it all. So, <clears throat> I will try to present ASAP in the sense of as simple as possible. No, as soon as possible, as simple as possible. So if something is complica eh, too complicated, this is one of my mantras, okay? So, and another one is that, that I formulated, that life is learning. You learn, therefore you exist, you live. Otherwise you pass through. So a question that I often ask myself and others, what did you learn? What did you learn? No. Today I'm very attentive to, I learn the way my grandkids are learning. I know that they grow up, but how do they know what they know? So I'm attentive to that. I will not go through all, <coughs> but this is the, one of the ways to, to say uh, uh, what I do in my uh, principle. <coughs> uh, SFT for me is solution-focused teaming, but the idea is the solution-focused work. I'm uh, very uh, attentive to uh, this <coughs> principle, meaning um, this is my email. Please send and tell, write to me, send me the presentation. If they will not, okay. I might add a few words about what I'm presenting here. Uh, <coughs> and I, I'm very attentive to, to the split whenever s people are in a situation of A or B, okay? There's a lot in between. And another thing is that, 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 to focus on the interaction, not whether one thing is right or the other. What's in the interaction? As if th there are three entities, person number one, person number two, and the entity that's uh, between them. A major um, principle for this workshop is this one. I would like to challenge it, to focus on resources. We all know its, its importance. So we will work with it. All the rest I will not get into it, but let me see if I do it now or le uh, later on. Okay, let's stop here. Hope. <coughs> so the first exercise, the first experience, I would like you to, to work in pairs. And the idea is like that. You share one each other resources that you already know that you have. I'm asking on your behalf and answering on my behalf. What do you mean? Like, what is it that you do and you do very well? You mean professionally? Not necessarily. Can you give an example? Yes. I know how to um, how do you say it? it's not solution uh, to work with Sudoku. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I know not only uh, not only how uh, to find the right uh, numbers, but I, I can also teach. Okay, how do you get into Sudoku? How do you uh, make the most of it, enjoy it, and so on and so forth? I'm very good at that. <coughs> My wife. Is really, she likes to cook, but she's very good in spaghetti bolognese. Amazing. I'm always asking how come that her bolognese sauce is better than anyone or any place other. Okay, specifically this dish. So this are, those are two examples, for example. Okay, I'm very good, I myself am very good in reframing, to listen to something and to put it in another frame. But this is me. What are you good at? So you're not looking for traits, 
but activities, okay, actions that you do. <laughs> One or two sentences, how was it? S simply. Hmm? No, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no. What did you say? <laughs> Painful, I think. Painful, she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A small distinction, we will not uh, drill into it, but <clears throat> I will s summarize that in my perception, it was enjoyable, it was fun. But there is a difference between sharing your resource or getting a feedback that someone else. They are both important. If I use the exercise you offered us with the envelope, okay? So if we put something in the envelope, it's sort of a feedback, someone that we say to that person. What we just did is the opposite, is to share. Okay. Not someone else. Someone else can add to it. So I'm not, it is as if I'm asking not how are you at giving feedback, but how are you at sharing. In this case, sharing your resources, sharing without being embarrassed about what you're good at. Coming here, I said, I cannot be pol too polite. I have to speak about, hey man, what are you proud about? What are you proud of? Not arrogant, okay, but proud. Boy, I'm good at that, good at that, good at that. I think that each and every one, homework that I will not check, <coughs> R write 30, a list of 30. I'm good at that, I'm good at that, I'm good at that. Some of it you might find that it's common sense for you, for you, for someone else. It's special. So, as an exercise, okay? I promise I will not check it, okay? So, we'll continue. What we did so far is still in the area of the known solution focus work. I would like to move slightly to, <coughs> this is in between. When I speak about solution focus, there are two kinds of solution focus. There are both solution focus, but I can do solution focus therapy, solution focus consultation, solution focus coaching, and so on and so forth. What we what we do, I'm not the only one, is solution focus work as helpers, okay, in the helping organization, uh, helping professional. But we can use it to implement either ideas. For example, suppose there's another method. This morning, I'm giving me an, an example, uh, agile, work was mentioned. It has its own language, own techniques, and so on and so forth. But one can take it and work with it the solution focus way. So it's not full solution focus work. It's using the solution focus idea, principle, <coughs> and techniques while working on something else. I remember, I think it was like 12 years ago, I was invited to Boston for an international <coughs> uh, company to work with the management using what they ask for, MBTI, Myers-Briggs, okay? Now, in principle, one would say it's counter solution focus because you tag people with four letters, okay? <coughs> um, so it's uh, li like, a, for those who don't know, there's a questionnaire. You get a picture of who you are according to 16 different personalities. So it's a personality questionnaire. But what I did is working with it the solution focus way. So suppose someone asks, what do you mean in the solution focus? 
So instead of talking about how people can be in conflict because of the differences, we work, how can we leverage? Okay, how can we work and utilize the resources, I mean, the other one's personality as resources and so on and so forth. So this is working the solution focus way with something else. <coughs> Here, <coughs> uh, the term I, I got into, this is his, um, Gay Hendrix, um, that uh, uh, came with the idea of the genius zone. I will uh, elaborate now. So he says that each and everyone have four zones. Okay, the first one is the incompetence zone. Things that you don't know how to do, you don't know how to operate, not only that you don't know, you hate, you hate to do it, you dislike it. Please help someone else do it. I don't understand it, I don't know how to work with it. If I need, I ask for someone else to do it. I'm really not good at it. Okay, someone told me <coughs> two days ago that I don't know how to change a tire in, in my car. Okay, really, I don't know anything. For him, it was the incompetence zone. The competence zone is something that each and every one of us can do. We know how to do it, we are capable. We are not so thrilled to do it, but it's possible. I don't know, clean the room or whatever, not, not something, <clears throat> but we are able to do it. Again, nothing new to that point. Then there's the excellence zone, that when you do what you do, you do it very well, you enjoy doing it. You get uh, admired, you are appreciated for, you get paid for it, okay? But it is as if there's something more, that people either hardly get to it, or just have a glimpse once in a while of more than that. And they, they will not change it. Why? Because they perform well, well in that. They are appreciated. They get paid, so why change? And then he comes, Gay Hendrix comes with the idea of something that is beyond that. And he calls it the genius zone. I want to, to say, because sometimes people, <clears throat> when I speak about it, uh, confuse. It's not about being a genius. It's sparkles of genius, okay? So, like uh, being able to, being more in light with what you do, be more brilliant in what you do. So this is being in the genius zone. The question is, how do I know that I'm there? So this is my way of putting the, the zones. The incompetence is here, competence is here, excellence, and there's something between the excellence and the genius zone. What Gay Hendrix says, it's the upper limit syndrome. The upper limit syndrome is, is the sort of line that either might prevent you from reaching the the zone of genius, the genius zone, or once you're there, you will not stay there too much and go back to excellence zone. So on personal note, I invite you each to explore and find your zone of genius, your genius zone. I will elaborate. So what are the four um, uh, fears that he says. One is the fear of outshining. Like, who am I to shine more than others around me? You're familiar with Marianne Williamson quote about, she said our big, biggest fear is not to fail, but yes. to show my best. This is the idea, okay? So one of the fears is like, it's not okay to outshine. 
because it puts everyone else in the shade. The second fear is to be of a burden, okay? If I will be enjoying the best of me, someone else will not be there and will have to carry whatever comes out of it. The loyalty, or uh, this loyalty, uh, is the, the third uh, fear. It says, if I outshine, if I'm really good at what I am, it's like I'm disloyal to all my friends, family, as if I leave them and I let myself be in my better place, better zone. And wrong, like maybe I'm doing something wrong and someone will find that there is a fault in what I do. So all those are four fears that he says that will prevent. Since he put it in his book, the book is, he has another, sorry, he has another book named The Genius Zone, but this is from his book, The Big Leap, okay? Like, if you would like to, to read more of, uh, about it. So, now I'm getting into connecting it to Solution Focus. Remember, I said that I'm a connector. I take Solution Focus, I take The Genius Zone because it appealed to me, okay? And then, how those two work together. So, <coughs> I will speak about that, but before that, I would like to invite you to do something like the exercise that we did, but now in the frame of the, the sparkles of genius. Like, <coughs> where do you find yourself being brilliant? Being in the flow, you feel that you are in the flow. You feel you're fully talented, you're gifted, proud, that it's very meaningful to you. The flow like uh, Miali, Chicks and Miali, the flow. Uh, being inspired, wow. Like I might say to myself, after doing something, like something wow, I'm good, I'm really good. The idea beyond this uh, workshop is to look for, if I have to give a sort of a re remedy, a <coughs> formula, find, we'll see if we have time for that here, find three cases where you say to yourself, wow, I did something extraordinary. And if you find those three, look for the common denominator and that will help you state your genius zone. But before we get there, more words, curiosity. If you find that something is, that you are very curious at, no one else pay attention. And, and the environment might say, why are you doing what you're doing? It's not important, it doesn't bring money or whatever. You're curious, go with it. The joy of effort. It might take effort, but you enjoy. I remember the first time I saw my son going to practice in basketball. I said, you're running all the time. And the coach tells you, run there, do that. <laughs> Lots of effort. What's the joy in it? And he enjoyed, he really enjoyed doing it. Being part of a team, and so on, being a part of a team, and so on and so forth. What's your desire? What's your talent? When you do something that you contribute, devotion with no fee, when you say to yourself, it's like a hobby to me, something I could do it for, and so on and so forth. So if you say, you find yourself using those words, you know that you are in the genius zone. The message, try to be as much as you can in that zone. Normally, as being a human being, you'll get back to the excellence zone. But if you work on it, okay. So now, same exercise, but in the frame of the genius zone. Not what are you good at it. What are you excellent at it? Can you bring 
a story, a situation, when you say to yourself, wow, that went really well for me. I knew I, I will ask you that. And then I said, okay, smart guy, before you ask that, can you elaborate? Can you share two stories of yourself? So I will share two small stories, but it's as an example. You don't have to copy paste. Two different stories is that once I was asked um, um, to facilitate a two-day workshop as an OD consultant in the north of Israel, north of Haifa, for those who know where, where it is, um, to, um, to managers in um, Khativa. Division. Division uh, of a, um, a, to general, uh, a, to a group of managers in a division in the north of Israel. I said, okay. And the CEO of the division said, I would like to meet with you to be on the same page about what you're going to do there. Which is okay. So we met in Tel Aviv. I didn't go there for two hours. We worked on that. He said, okay, we need more, uh, one more meeting, a second meeting, a week later, and after two meetings, four hours, he said, wow. Now I have a clear idea about the process, how it will work, and how from a list of different objectives, we move into a working plan for all the managers. Thank you very much. I smiled and said, thank you. And then he said the sentence. Now, what do, why do I need you for those two days workshop? I have a clear idea. I can facilitate myself. I don't need you. I'm, I'm saying it slowly. In, in my mind, it went very fast, OK? Wow, I did a very good job. And because of that, I'm losing two, day of, uh, two days of work. And then I realized, listening to him, that he was right. And then I said, if you feel that you can facilitate, you don't need me. Stop. New sentence, new paragraph. And then said, but you might enjoy or prefer that I do it. That way, I will stand in front of the, all the managers. They will ask me questions. You will sit in the session. And you decide whether to speak or not to speak. You will not have to handle the process. I will handle the process. And you can decide as a CEO what, whenever you want to decide, whatever needs to decide. Mm, good idea. OK. Do the work. And then I realized that if I didn't say what I said, automatically two days of work and pay, OK, are lost. And I said, I was like, wow, I'm good. Wow, I'm good. OK? Another story. Ah, actually, it, uh, before the Soul Conference in Frankfurt, there was such a thing. Huh? Yeah, it, it was the only time that my wife said, OK, I'll come with you. But let's combine it. We went to Berlin, traveled, and then we went to Frankfurt. She did what she did, and I was in the conference. We are sitting in Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion <laughs> Airport, about to the takeoff to Berlin. Seventh row on the right, she's beside the alley she asked for. I'm in the middle, and someone else has to be near the window. And no one comes. They started to close the doors. And I said, OK, we'll have more room. As I said it, the last second, she came. Beautiful, tall, blonde woman. Walked. My wife and I got up. She sat by the window. I, I noticed that she came like that. I mean, no handbag, no nothing. Interesting, but now I'm sitting beside her and my wife. Now, shall I say something about that? Not to say? While I'm thinking to speak about it or not, my wife puts her head on my shoulder and says to me, you made it. You succeeded. You have a beautiful woman sitting behind you. 
beside you. Okay, what do I answer to that? And when she lifted her head, I put my head on her shoulder and I said, you're right. There's a beautiful woman sitting beside me and on the other side, there's a blonde one. <laughs> I felt like a genius, okay? How can I, <laughs> how did I manage to come up with such a, in a short, you know, like I uh, didn't have time. For, so from a place that I ask myself, what do I do? I was very proud of me. So this is, for example, moments of being proud of really admiring something that happened to me or that I did. Okay? Do, you don't have to copy paste, just fine. No, we're just all <laughs> proud of you now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know, giving back, I'm proud of myself that I can stand here and say it, you know, without being too polite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, okay. So, uh, Share moments of sparks, okay? Being be brilliant. The other side might think it's normal for them. This is not the point. The point is, wow, I really felt good. It was something special, beyond the normal, beyond the, this is the key word, beyond. Beyond the good work that you do each and every day. <laughs> As a representative, can someone share proudly uh, something that he shared, he or she shared? We will not go through everyone. It's not a one-day workshop. It's a, it's, but you feel comfortable enough to share? Mm, yes, thank you. The last one I just shared now is uh, my daughter is a child who didn't speak much. Please ask her a question and she'd give very short answers. My son was a type of, he just fell up. So I remember doing a coaching where I thought, uh, where could I meet her where she would speak to me? And I thought maybe when she's playing on the carpet, I could just lay down on the carpet and see what happens. And that day, I wasn't able to do that. Um, but she was in bed and I thought, I'll just lay down on her bed. Maybe it's not a carpet, but maybe it'll work. And uh, she started, I said, oh, I think I'm going to bed, or I don't remember what I said. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's school today, da 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 And she started talking and opening up. And I was, I was, that moment was a moment of working. <laughs> so, um, and I was very proud of having seen it. And she's 16 today, and ah. I still do it. And it's been 10 years or so since this practice has started, and it works wonderfully. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, and every time, there's a little, like, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. It reminded me of one day that my son came from school and said, how was school? And she, he said, fine. And then I said, can you elaborate more? And say something. Daddy, I already spoke too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> So the phrase, I already spoke too much, was longer than fine, right? <laughs> so yes. OK. So, so can my, I ask, if I'm 64, and my daughter lies in the carpet next to me and shut down and just wonders how I feel and shuts up and I start talking, what does it mean exactly? <laughs> you can interpret that for yourself. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and again, the stories of the situations or the actions that one takes is special and unique for, to each and every one of us. So, the, but the idea, <coughs> I, um, personally, I write morning pages. I don't know if you're familiar with that. <coughs> Jul <coughs> uh, Julia. Julia Joy wrote a book and, and, and the, uh, the idea was that uh, uh, she worked with artists that had blocks in their artwork and the tools that she uh, found was to write every morning three pages, handwriting, not uh, typing. So I've been, I've been doing it for 13 years now. 
But <clears throat> on the other side of the three pages, I, I summarized the day by writing five th thank you notes. Thank you that, thank you for, thank you. That's not new, but what is new, that for a few weeks I'm writing, okay, sparkles of my genius zone, okay? So every time there's something small that happens, I write it down before it vanish. So I invite you to do it, okay? You don't have to put it later on di digitally on your computer, but the fact that you, like a, a dream that before it disappeared, you know, to write down. So in that case, to, to observe, to listen to it, to be attentive, to notice and to write down. That will help you enlarge. And then you will formulate the sentence that says, okay, this is my genius zone. We are not through yet, but I'll invite you. I wrote my email. If you would like to have any kind of conversation, ask questions, being coached, you know, like as a continuum of this um, session, I'll do it gladly, okay? So even if you don't feel like doing it, you say, okay, pull your arm, let's help him, you know, like. Um, he will be excited from that. So. Having said that, uh, <coughs> two uh, things that I want to uh, share. You're familiar with uh, the quote by um, Steve DeShazer, everything is a useful gift. This you already know. Now, what can we put instead of your gift? So it will be from the genius zone of yourself. So, when you ta we take that and we look, okay, what can be a useful gift? We are already solution focus working. Take it beyond and one step further is to say, okay, what can be wow, useful wow? I don't know, put the word that will appeal to you instead of gift and see how you elevate this quote. Another one by Benjamin Disraeli, the greatest good you can do for another is not just to share your riches, but to reveal him his own. Here is not to tell him necessarily, but you can invite. You can invite yourself, you can invite others. Okay, starting by asking, hey, what are you good at? What are you really good at? What are you excellent? In what are you wow? Normally people don't ask and answer that can start today and take it as far as you can, asking your, and answering yourself about yourself and about others. I will not get into uh, when do you say something, work in the solution focus way, or let him or she say it by itself. But I, I'm just reminded working with another CEO that <laughs> said to me that um, one of uh, his VP is always late. He said to me, it, it drives me crazy. Really, I, no matter what, in what time when I want to uh, have an appointment, and I'm the CEO, and I tell him, don't be late this time. He says, okay, and he's late, like 15 minutes late. And then I found myself, it was, it was not a session, but talking to him, I said, okay, suppose, suppose he's not late. What does it mean? So you tell me that he comes on time. So suppose you invite him to a meeting at 10 o'clock. What, what does it mean to be on time? Uh, to arrive 10 minutes earlier to prepare himself with coffee so that in 10 o'clock we, we will start. And then I said to him, okay, so tell him that. What do you mean? Tell him. Our next meeting is at 10 o'clock. And when I mean 10 o'clock, please come 10 minutes earlier so that we can be on time. And then he looks at me and says, wow, you are saying my wishes better than I do. And I didn't want to argue with him, telling him it was your words, okay? But here is the definition. It 
saying to someone, don't come late, is different from saying, come on time. Okay? Huge difference. For me, one of the solution focus tools that I took is, the, and I work a lot with it, is the, the <laughs> wait, waiter <laughs> question. What would you like instead? I'm not saying to other people, don't speak about what not, speak about what yes. I don't say it because then I myself use the no sentence. But asking, what would you like instead? And once one formulate, okay, go for it. Very simple, very simple. Now, connecting everything to solution focus. I thought, I'm not, <coughs> I didn't do it because it's time consuming, but you, you know the question that I can start uh, saying, suppose this uh, workshop ends and you continue with your day and you say to yourself, it was an excellent workshop. What was in the workshop that made it excellent? Now, why is it solution focus? Because you're, you're not supposed to say what will happen. It already happened. What did happen? You answer in past tense. I'm not saying anything that you don't know. I just want to emphasize. Now I'm asking and answering. Is there something manipulative in that question? Yes. And what is the manipulation that I asked? Suppose it was excellent. Suppose it was so. I put the word excellent. I didn't say, what do you think will happen? I said, it was great. It was excellent. Now tell me what happened that made it so. So we put sometimes specific direction doing solution focus work. My contribution today is that you can change from excellent to wow. Suppose you were at your best. Suppose you are at your best. What will it look like? Some of us use, what's your best hope? Again, once you say best hope, the other side is directed to their own best hope. Instead of best hope, let's put something else. What else? In that case, your genius zone. So, in, in a work that I will do probably as a coach, um, I, I might ask, <coughs> okay, we're going to work together. Let's identify you at your best. Let's explore and find you at your best. And whether I use or not the word genius zone, let's see what's your genius zone and whatever, whatever we do will be in the context of the genius zone. We do ask what's your preferred future, okay? What's your best hope? What is your, what is the solution? The miracle questions, you pose, suppose you go to sleep tomorrow. So what will tell you, not that the problem disappeared, but that you are at your best, at the best of yourself, at the best of yourself. So I help the other side to build its own uh, genius zone. Do I do that in, in my work? Yes. Yeah. One of the things that I do is, uh, it's called the personal growth program, Tw 20 <coughs> uh, uh, meetings that w one or two of, of them would be to find and formulate the genius zone and people grow. Today I'm not about change. Change will uh, occur. Let's go. Let's be better in your perception the next time. Am I better than I was two hours ago? Definitely. And if I practice, I'll know how to give specific good answer to that. So you do the same. So it's like saying, suppose, I ask you, 
I was in a workshop uh, with Insu Kimbo and uh, about social focus coaching and uh, I wanted to ask about what happens if someone doesn't know how to uh, fire uh, his worker and he works on solution focus and he managed to do it. And, but what he didn't know that she, the worker, was, in pre was pregnant and according to the law, he's not allowed to fire her during her pregnancy. But he didn't know that, so he didn't share the coach and so the coach did. So the coach did a very good job. And I wanted to, to ask her that. So I started, it was in the workshop, I started to say, suppose, and everyone was laughing, just because I said suppose, and then I, I wondered, to continue with the question, or not to continue, to leave it uh, as it is. Coming back here, I'm saying suppose now, after I said that, suppose you are already in your genius zone, and the only reason you didn't say it because you didn't know the term. What are the first signs that you can already say? Wow, this is part of my genius zone. This is part of my. So I leave you with that question, continue on elaborating. Uh, we have a few minutes <coughs> uh, until we end. Uh, we are reaching the end of the workshop. Can you say something about the impact or anything that I will not force you to say what did you take out of it? Or you have some time to say whatever you say. Um, normally when I do uh, invite something like that, people start giving me feedback. <laughs> it's possible, but not necessarily. You started uh, describing the difference between talking about solution and problems, and you took it and you got my curiosity about this zone. Because we, we are usually focused on problems and what goes wrong, and you really zeroed in on something that I think I will continue paying attention and thinking about. <coughs> I have like billions of questions, and uh, what I'm taking it away is the feeling, it's, a, it's, it's the feeling of sharing what I'm genius at, or what I'm brilliant at, and during this sharing some, some things got, got lost maybe some obstacles why you don't usually share those things, maybe some fears why you don't do it, and maybe the group of people, because, you know, like, speaking too much about yourself, it's not always welcome, and in this rare moment when you do it, and you really, re like, understand your strengths, and <coughs> it feels so well, so thank you for the experience. And taking from what you said to everyone, each and everyone, I think that before I can allow myself telling others what I'm good at, what, and to say it proudly, you know, like being aware, I should say to myself, if I am able to, con to conceptualize, to find the words and say, wow, I'm excellent at that, I can spark, I, I'm in full light, I'm in the flow in such and such and such situation. When I have an idea and I start writing the idea, not me, and I find myself that the idea develops to a model and a full thing, and in no time I realize that I just wanted to write one sentence. You know? mm, I was in the flow, well, this is part of my genius zone. Okay, my. So first I realize where, is my, where my genius zone is, and then I can elaborate others. Okay. Um, you started first by breathing. <laughs> 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 uh, <I, I> <laughs> um, Excuse me. 
playing it very, I'm elaborating, okay, like magnifying. I would say that what you just said is a part of your genius zone. You noticed, but not only you noticed, you were able to communicate it. And you said, now my words, I noticed your body language, okay? And then I knew how to respond. This is some of your strength, okay, that you can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, for me, definitely, it will have a big impact, and it was very inspiring also with the slide of the markers. I call it like that, the markers of the genius zone, because it has such a wide variety. 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 Exactly. Thank you very much. Because um, it, it was on this list not only doing things, it's like in the solution focused approach when you um, continue to work on something, sometimes people.